We are here at Spookella and it is so much fun here. It's so cool. We're gonna try to see who we can find, who we can interview, walk around the floor for a little bit. You know, you know the vibe, you know what's up. All right, let's get into it. Woo! From the Joker to Pennywise, Terrifier somehow broke through that cliche to create an instantly recognizable character who actually makes grown men scared in the movie theaters. How does it feel knowing you left an impact on the horror genre to the point where people pass out and puke at the movies? It's pretty cool. You know, we didn't expect any of this with uh, Terrifier 2. I mean, we weren't even supposed to be in theaters. So to hear that people are having those kind of visceral reactions to our film you usually don't want to see people walking out of your film and getting grossed out, and, but it feels awesome. Yeah. So I can't complain. <laughs> it's like, yes, I, I will take this new mantle. I have scared many of people. Like, that's the yes. a, a title. Yes. Art the Clown started out quite different and more human-like in previous short film segments. What has been playing up the more supernatural elements done for you as you approach art now compared to when you first started the journey with him? Um, yeah, because in part two, we definitely started going more with the supernatural yeah. aspect of them. And um, I think with that, it's made him more confident with himself. He's a little bit more arrogant and cocky with what he's doing now, too. And you see that in part two. He's taking more risks. He's going out in public now and just going after people. And he's having more fun. Because like, I'm hard to kill. Let's have some fun with that. But at the same time, now he has a foe that can actually take him out. So he might be a little bit more cautious, but actually he might be more crazy in the third one. We'll have to see. Oh, gosh. He's going to just descend into madness. Yes. <laughs> how did you mentally prepare for the role as an actor, and how did you keep yourself in that state of mind while filming, um, like, ex doing these explicitly, like, gory scenes and then just turn it all off and you have to go home and, like, watch TV and just chill? Well, I, I come from stage acting, so I'm used to having to play different characters sometimes in the same show, like alternate characters. So I can go in and out of character without having to go fully in character all entire day. So I, I know it's all make-believe. So I, as soon as I say rolling, I'm like, okay, let's go. Step, 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 cut. I'm back to myself. And I know it's fake, so it doesn't really get to me. And so, yeah, I, it really doesn't get to me at all. I just, I understand the character already. He's already living up there. And I just bring him out when I have to. Oh, that's kind of scary. I know. <laughs> what if he just comes out in like a random part? Like, oh, you oh know. no. You know, well, you know, ho hopefully I'm not behind the wheel driving. <laughs> Did you feel imposing at all in the makeup? Did you ever like scare anyone for fun on set? Like, is there a certain kind of animal instinct that goes along with all of it? Oh yeah, I, I like to scare people on set all the time. Especially when they're new to the set, I like to find way. I did that especially to Lauren Lavera, who plays Sienna in part two. Her first day on set, I stood outside of the window to where uh, she, would, where she was getting her makeup on, and I just stood there. And she and also Kaylee, who plays um, Brooke, they were both in there, and they turn around and see me in the window, and they just ah! scream. And I'm like, "Welcome to Terrifier!" And I would do that constantly to her during the whole movie. I would just sneak up behind her and just stand there and wait for her to turn. And then I'm like, ah, that right in her face. scary. That is scary. Oh, yeah. oh, my gosh. It keeps everybody young. <laughs> Which of the on-screen kills is your favorite to perform and then also rewatch when looking back? Probably my favorite to perform was in the Clown Cafe scene. I had so much fun because I got to use a Tommy gun and a flamethrower in the same day. I was like a kid on set that day. I had so much fun. Plus, I was warmer because we had fire everywhere, so I was like, oh, I'm for once not freezing my tuchus off. So that was more fun for me than anything else. Why do you think audiences have responded the way they have of the character of Art the Clown? Uh, slasher films aren't as popular as they were in the 80s, and yet you were able to perform in a way that instantly put art right up there with the horror icons. Huh. I, I think it's because... He's doing something new, but also familiar. And he's taking things to a new level than where they have been with slashers, especially in the past decade or so. They've gotten really tame. He's gotten back to basics in a lot of ways. 
but it's also his personality. He's got like the silent nature of like like Jason and Michael Myers, but he's also got the humor and sadistic nature of like Freddy and Chucky. And it's all that combined, I think that's why people love him so much. He's got so much charisma and he's just such a fun character and you don't know what to expect from him. He's very unpredictable. I, I like that, honestly. Richard of the Howard Stern Show recently explained to Howard about all the gory scenes in the film, plus how the Kickstarter campaign got the sequel made. Uh, how do you feel hearing Howard discussing your film on the air? That's how popular it's grown in such a short amount of time. I mean, he sounded pretty interested in all the films. That was wild. That, I woke up that morning, didn't know all that was going on, and my agent is like calling me. She's like, David, David, David. Um, Richard Christie, uh, Howard Stern's people want to talk to you. And I'm like, what? Because I'm like, I, I, like, I've listened to Howard for a long time. So to know that he was talking about me on his show was mind-blowing. Same thing with Stephen King. Stephen King mentions you. You're like, you know who I am? He's like one of my favorite authors. So that kind of reaction has been amazing to me. And he tweeted about it twice. I know. Double exposure. Like, holy crap. I think Richard Christie's going to be excited that you know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he cried. Well, finally, since we're here at Spookala, I want to know what scares the man behind Art the Clown the most? Like, what is something that just truly terrifies you? I don't like dark voids. Like, when I'm sleeping in bed at night, I have to have all the doors closed. I can't have just, like, an open closet. Yeah. I don't like it. That I keep is, on imagining something coming out of it. That I, is so real. That is yeah, so real. I don't like it. That or tornadoes, because I was in a tornado when I was a kid, and I don't like tornadoes. Actually? Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, 1989 in Huntsville, Alabama, an F4 hit Huntsville, and I was at my church when it got hit. That's insane. Yeah. Well, that is the end of that. Cool, yeah. It was nice talking to you. Very nice talking to you as well. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. All right, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed. I know I did. Talking to Damien and David, it was just it was just so much fun. I had such a blast talking to them. If you really hard watching Terrifier and another doing all these gory scenes. It's, David's also the Grinch, the mean one. Go check that out too. That's, this, this is awesome. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, all the fun stuff.